So, I need to ask you to, in your mind, to go before the Chetei Tzadas. Because the inyonim that have to do between a husband and a wife, and you all know, and I don't need to, to belabor it, that dafke among people who are really fine and from, there is a problem because everybody tells them, like, uh, learn the chupas chasanim, learn all the dinim, get to be clear that you know when is the vesed, when it is not. And they learn all these things, but they don't learn anything that's much deeper that has to do with the Indian of what is it about in the Broche Sameach the Sabach Reim Huahuvim Kesamechach Yetzircha Began Eden Mikedem. We are trying to get to a place where we can be Lifne before the Chetet Sadat so we can start talking about why was it that the Rebbein sh- uh, chose such a means for the perpetuation of the human uh, race, if you will, that Dafket has to be in such uh, avarim of the body. Couldn't it have been that heart to heart should be able to create that? So, but the Rabbi Nishlam knew what, what he, she was doing. So, that's the way it is. The question is, what's the yachas? How do we relate to that? So, I want to start with the nigan. Mayim Rabim Mayim Rabim Layochlu Lechabois Es Hoahavon Un Horois Layishtefu Ho Un Horois Layishtefu Ho Ay, 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 mayim rabim, mayim rabim, layochlu lechabois es ho'ahavon. Un horois layishtefu ho, un horois layishtefu ho. I see many cachos of Malibel, cachos of Azrael, ki azakamoves ahava, kosho kisha oil ki hino. I see many cachos of Malibel. Kachosam al zrahoyev ki hazakamoves ahava kosho kisha oil kino reshofe ho rishpe el ay 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 reshofe ho Rishpeel, ay, 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 shall have us, yo. It's a, it's a deep nigging that my Elta Elta Zayda was Mechaber. He was one of the people who sometimes was asked to be a Balshachis and Bells. So it's a deep nigging. He used it uh, for other, for other in Yonim, but it got to me that these are the words that I want to use it. Because very few people have, you know, if you look at certain svarim, you will see that they um, denigrate the thing. The Rambam says the Chushamishush is the the lowest level of, of, of thing. He didn't didn't give it the kind of uh, sense and feeling that we find when we get to the Zayra Kodesh, where before there were other also some people who were doing Kabbalah. But they were doing Kabbalah without enchantment. The Zohar HaKadosh came and it was about the Malka and the Matranusa and everything became a lot more romantic. So that when later on in Kabbalah you find that they're talking Isarusa Dele'ele, Isarusa Dele'ele, Main, Duchrin, Main, Nukvin, they're using these words that come from 
sexuality and from the way in which it connects. When I ask myself, what is it that people who come out of the yeshiva know about these things? I feel very sad because I go back to my own situation, you know. What is it that, that I know, that I knew? I uh, Haskala, you may remember there was a time when Jakey Zichon Levrochev had a fabrengen uh, before an ufruf of one of the chassanim and he said, oi, oi, he says, uh, getting married is like a second Yeridas HaNeshome to a goof that hasn't learned Chesidus. Do you remember that? That's all right. <laughs> but I, uh, you, you see, wha wha what he was uh, saying is that it's not Eishas Chayel Ateres Balo, that there is something greater. And I have the feeling that, you know, all the feminists, they don't like the notion that there should be a bracha. Barachem Neshalem, welcome, welcome. Quick seat yourself because I need your attention here. Yeah. So when the feminists were not happy with the Broche Shalayasani Isha. And, I w and they're right about many things, but I asked myself, what is it like to be a girl and to experience the first time uh, to have a, a period? Why is it that from that aver I have to let blood go? What is it like for a young woman when after the mikveh and they're getting together after the chuppah and there has been no uh, preparation by him and by her and the chosen doesn't even know what the Avrahamin and where they're located in a woman and all he knows is that he better be doing a gmar beer you know very quick so he shouldn't uh, he shouldn't have an ejaculation beforehand because that would be for him and so on and so forth. And there is no sense of what it takes to receive, to get the woman to receive the man in, in a way that is open-hearted. And what does it take? We, in Chesidus, we always say you can't have you can't have mind churin shouldn't be coming before the mind nukvin. <laughs> and very often men don't even know that such a thing as mind nukvin exists in a reality that lubricates the entrance and makes it possible for the man to have a yichud with a woman in a way that is not painful and in a way that is responding to her you know, that sense, uh, how does it say, um, the person who first she first is with makes uh, for her the opportunity of looking forward. Is it going to be something pleasant or it's not? And if it isn't, that she has to figure, oi, here I'm working uh, from early morning on Friday and trying to get Shabbos together. I'm very tired and all of a sudden Villa Repes. And what he wants has nothing to do with how I feel and how I'm ready and so on and so forth. So you can understand how over the years and, and number of children and no real interest in the feeling life of a woman, what that's like. And so I want to say, what, figure, what would it be like if someone were to enter your body uh, against your readiness to receive? You wouldn't like that. Go even further, you know, the time comes to give birth. Do you have a notion of what it is, what Hevle Leda are really all about? I once tried to write a book the title of which was going to be Meditations Between Contractions. If you have been present to a birth, you know that the contractions come on a certain number of minutes in between, 
And what is it like when the contractions happen? And at the time of the contraction, a woman can't think of anything else except, oi, oi, what's happening in her body? But then, ah, ah, she catches her breath and she can say, I'm in a process that will create life and I'm giving myself to the creation of life and so on. Mo men haven't experienced what that's like, you know. So if I were to go and say, um, when you make the bracha, sh if you make if you make the bracha shleisani isha, keep in mind what this is about, what that experience is all about of being a woman, and then if you talk to the women, to the woman in your life, that that particular woman in your life, to be able to say, oi. I'm sorry that I haven't understood who you are and what it's all about. And so I, I, you see why I'm why I'm so careful at this point because this is a conversation that's very difficult to have, and that's the reason why I asked that the women not be present so that we can talk like to each to each other in such a way that we don't have to pretend but if you had a chance to read what I had written in that little contrast and what I send you as the shear then I'd like to respond because this is not so much what I have to say as it is what what goes on for you So if anybody is prepared to speak, uh, I hope that I'll hear sometimes a question, sometimes a he'ara, what you think you ought to respond with and how you feel uh, what's necessary really for this wonderful part of Claudius Royal that is nizhar in all kinds of things, but they don't know how to be nizhar in that thing to, uh, to where you say... Um, Gochin Velochis, your your wife Gutza, she is she is small, talk to her. Or when you have the wonderful piece that I quote where Rav Kahana is hiding under the bed because they all say you should be silent, you shouldn't be talking during the time. And he hides under the bed and then he says, Rebbe, you're talking with your wife, you're trying to make her feel good before you get started. How come all of a sudden you had told us differently? And he says, Kahana, get out of here, you know? And finally he says, in order to get her to be Berutza, you have to talk. Uh, so I want to say that this is, Lahavli, even with animals, you see that there is a courting that's going on. And most of the time, um, as far as I'm aware, that courting is missing. The nice words that need to be said uh, to uh, a wife are not being said. In our home, I do. Th I have a little minhag that on Friday I write a love letter to my wife, and I put that letter, fold it up, l and put it under her plate. And I have other guests that I do the same. I write them a letter because most of the time you don't say the gushy stuff. You know, you just say, is this ready, is that ready, and uh, who's going to do the dishes, and, and, <laughs> and you talk that kind of stuff. When do you ever say, give the hakoras toiva, to be able to say, I'm so glad that you decided to marry me, and I appreciate who you are, and so on and so forth. You realize that that's what they're craving for, and if they don't get it, they get surly, and you have a feeling that You'll never get a good loving in your own bed with your own wife. And partly that has to do because of the responsibility that you need to take in relationship to courting. So I have said what I want to say and I want to hear from you before I go on. Your hand is up, speak. It is. No, I, had a, I had a question. Please. Come closer, <laughs> please. Yeah. You... you uh, I mean, in the Kutras, you write, this is, I think, a very fundamental question. You write a Louis Mahava body, you feel you be Mahava. And I was wondering if you could elaborate. I mean, so you, you, and you discussed this really well, because it's, you know. Um, but I wasn't sure what the 
conclusion was in terms of whether it's a causal relationship or it's just you were asking a temporal question about which comes first. Uh, uh, Urban, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm a little hard of hearing and I didn't get it. Would you please repeat it for me so I can hear what the Shaila was? No, I mean, you asked the, the fundamental question about whether I have a is bar me me do me do or 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 which came first, love or or, or the other? Um, Aha, uh -huh, very good. What, whether or not you were asking the question as a temporal question about which came first or a causal question about whether one brings it. Uh, and now I got the question. Okay. By Yitzchak is written by Yevieh el Sora el el Sora imoy veYahaveho. So you have a sense that first was the konase, you know, and then he he st he loved her, so that the love came afterwards. But I want to say something. This is not for our society. In our society, this is not going to work this way. It works a lot because. Look here, I don't know how old she was, but if you go with Rashi and everybody, Rivka is three years old, she falls off the camel, he's 40. You know, I don't, I don't quite know how to, to see their zivuk, that first zivuk, happening for them. But today there's a whole different kind of a world, you know, there's, there's a sense that, why is it called Nesuin, Nasa Isha, you know? He, he raises her up. I'm talking about the, val the value that you give and the courting that goes on and the way in which the heart gets involved. I want to say the greatest aphrodisiac is the heart and not Viagra or whatever, you know? If you feel that uh, your person is open and receiving you and and uh, longing for you, then what happens is, is it turns on the heart and the whole goof follows along. But uh, the goof won't follow along if you don't have that kind of a sense. So that's what I wanted to, s to say, you know. And that there's a section that I wrote, Iboyelahu, to, to deal with exactly what you're saying. But it's not in this part. It's in, 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 in the whole booklet. I only send you this particular part which deals with the chosen uh, and, uh, and, and in your name that come in the first week. I'm sorry, I actually read the whole, I was referring to the Boy Lahu part because I read the whole thing. So. I see, okay, then that's good. Okay, then I'm sorry, we can go back to Hassan. Yeah. I'm just curious. So anybody else, please. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Uh, the question, I think, becomes to what, whom do we look to for advice? Obviously, we can't look to the Gemara and Midrashim because it's so, it's so old. Ki'ilu kafoi shade and the whole concept of love doesn't seem to exist. Courtship. You take somebody and you have courtship after you meet them. Like the Indian, I guess, uh, you get married and then you're, you're locked into a room with them for a week or two so you can get to meet them. So I guess it's a growing experience, especially that's a function of age as well when you marry somebody young. Yep. Today we have some such as uh, 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 of an underage person, you know, you get arrested for it, but uh, many of the others, they'd be arrested uh, in the society for, for uh, for having sexual relations with someone who's underage. With a minor. So but look here, what is your question? I, I hear you, you make a good statement that today is not like it used to be. But what is the question? Where do we look to for advice? The, the, the answer is that, that door, door, the door shove, you know? Uh, that even though there's a question that I think that Rav was saying, that why was it saying Dor Dor Vedorshav, shouldn't it be given cover to the Dorshim first? But uh, if he had said who the Dorshim are in this door, he would have said, Oi, Gewalt, Feh, you know, but if you show him the door, they say, for do that door, they're good Dorshim, you know. <laughs> but I think what we have to do in our, in our time is really, in some way, reinvent that, which is like saying, how are we going to do this thing in our time? And the, uh, the answer is we don't have to tell <laughs> the people so much about 
romance and courtship. They only think that this belongs to they, you know, that they are doing that. And in our situation, you don't do that. You you meet once or two or, or three times and you say this is a good shidduch. I remember what it was for me. When I first got married, I was very much in Lubavitch. And my first shidduch was with someone who was teaching in Besrivke. And after the third time, I said, is it okay to ask the Rebbe? which meant uh, to get a haskama of that. What did I know about, really know about her and so on and so forth? It was much, was hard. And I want to say that today we have to make sure that the people will get to know each other. There's a wonderful story um, my wife tells me about Rav Bultman. He had a daughter who, you, do you know who I'm talking about? Raise hands if you know who I'm talking about. Rav Bultman in his analysis of a wonderful, wonderful person. So there was a yeshiva uh, a person who wrote an article about how unhappy he was about the lack of uh, menschlichkeit in the education of uh, yeshiva people. And uh, a good criticism, and she read it, and she really wanted to meet that person. And when she found out uh, who, who that person was. She had a name. Please sit down. And when she found out who that person was, she checked out and turns out he was married. So she was sad. A few weeks, uh, a time later, she came in from out of town and visited with her parents. And they had a guest for Shabbos and turns out that the guest was the one who wrote that article. They started to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk until three in the morning when they woke up their parents and said, when j uh, I would like to have a mazel tov. This is the man I want to marry. So where did they meet? They met in their hashkafe. They met in their, in, in their hopes for life. They met in their vision for, for how to live the way that the Rabbi Shalom wants people to live. So she was, in some sense, not just merely going to be a housewife. Reb Shlomo once told me a funny story. He's in Yerushalayim, and Ayit comes over to him and says, Reb Shlomo, man tochter. You know, he wants to, uh, he wants to make a shidduch. So Reb Shlomo asked, what's the mile of your tochter? Sie can kochen gefilter fish for 50 people. That, that, that's the mother. That's what he should marry. Then he says, um, and what language does she speak? English. So he says, um, how will I, I don't know any English. How will I speak with her? He says, what do you with her? This is not a joke, you know. In a sense, it's a vetic to hear, to hear a story like this. Uh, the, the whole notion that we have you know, you can't really talk with them. Today there are women who really, some women understand see this better than some of the men. Uh, I had heard that there was a group of Satma Hevre really deep into things who were studying with Rachel uh, Elior and Eretz Yisrael, the works of uh, Rebang Starashelia. You know, that's that the Rebam Stashala, even the, the regular Chabadnikas don't go into, into Avedah Salevi, into what he ha ha had written. So you have to give credit, uh, and it started out, the whole business, Melamda Tiflis, is such a stupid thing because it only deals with the issue of Soita. And before that, there's another statement that's being made. The other thing I want to say, Rabbi Kiva is so remarkable. There is a, 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 a shot that comes from um, Reb Chaim Chernovitz's Sefer, the name escapes me at this point. Be'er Ma'im Chaim. So he speaks about the, the Arbo Shenichnes Pardes. And the only one who Nichnes Besholem and Yotze Besholem was Reb Akiva. Ben Zoyme, Ben Azai said, I don't want to get married. Ben Zoyma was a widower. Acher was a gorush. 
none of these people had a vital relationship with their wife. And Sholem, Nitzat B'Sholem, Yotzat B'Sholem, he said, Sholem Bayis. In other words, they came from a, he came from an experience in which he was a whole man, you know, a full, grounded human being who had, uh, who loved his wife and she loved him, the great love story of Rochel and Rabbi Kiva, you know, that he wow. would... And Shira Shirim, you know, is uh, Shira Shirim is is, is Kochi Kodeshim for him. Uh, and it's not so much when you read in in uh, art scroll. Shira Shirim is denatured, you know. They don't want it to be that someone should be able to say Yeshukani bin Shikaspi and really mean it, mamish in the mamish thing. Okay, so th I hope that that I have responded to you. Uh. Can I just uh, just mention two things? Rabbi Kiva, first of all, did he not? He came home and his wife threw him out for for how long to go learn? So how long were they really together relative to the time that he was away in yeshiva yeah. learning as a booker? I I, I want to tell you something. It's one thing what they say, but I can't believe that during that time he didn't come home for Shabbos. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, so I I I think. I, I think uh, the fact that she s she didn't throw him out, she gave him the opportunity. He overheard her when she talked to, to a neighbor and so on. It's a whole other story. But that kind of love, you know, when a woman really... Uh, when I think of Reb Shnei Zalman uh, and his wife was sending him to the Magid because his brother didn't get Rishus from his wife, but she gave him Rishus to go because she knew what would happen and what did he bring back to her some of some of the nigunim that he brought back had really that whole kind of flavor of shira so Can I just ask yeah that sort of skirting around so you you got to the uh, to the other to the ruchnius aspect but you were tying the gashmius with the ruchnius by asking yeah. the first question mm -hmm. but what how do i look upon premarital sex, in terms of truly knowing somebody prior to marriage in order that they not be a foreign object prior to marrying somebody. Yeah, so, so I, 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 so I want to tell you something. Schleppner nicht von Zung. You know that expression? Schleppner nicht von der Zung is like saying, don't make me say things. Uh, that uh, you have a notion what I am going to say anyway and I shouldn't be saying, okay? But recently there was uh, some, a, w a woman did a remarkable uh, essay about the issue of Nagia and, uh, and how, uh, and I have a feeling that so many people who get married don't have any ideas about it. How to go about doing this, I think the same way as the women have some people who are teaching them about uh, laws of Nida and so on and so forth. They could also teach them about the deeper things. A lot of things could be given over uh, in words, but I don't know what, you know, if I were to, to see how many uh, Yidin uh, young young men with Borden Peyes are looking at pornography because they want to learn a little bit about stuff like that. You know, that's why I'm saying ich will zachiten mit mein Loschen. Okay. May, may I possibly say a, a shtickel of a, a shot is more than a question. Um, with Ki um, Yilul and the Tiflis. So it's um, it's Berazayin uh, and Veloza, I think. Yeah. So, so basically he's saying in the case of Soita, he's saying, "Well, look, if you if you if you learn Tyra, then it'll be schos Tyra. Yeah. Be able to see the the scar the scar, right? So then, so then Rabbi Loza says, "What are you doing here, Ben Azai? You're teaching a woman how to be loose and yet get away with it. You're yeah. teaching her tifu. Yeah. It's a joke. It's humorous. He's yeah. not answering what he's doing. I am doing your pizza. I am teaching her tifu." I understand what the what the zitzim leben was, you know, of that situation, because they're really talking. They're we're learning 
today I don't think we have an Indian of Kanoes as we had in Masachet Tzoyte and we aren't going to go and bring it to with the, with the Efer HaMizbeach and stuff like that. What we are doing right now is the culture has is so full of sexuality that the question is that uh, when Rav Shneir Zalman talks about what is in Sholish Klippas Hat Muiz Legamre and what is in, in Klippas Neuga, you know? So, I don't know what, what to tell you about that, but it, the, the, the world is filled with that. And we have to create Birulim so that people should be able to think about this and feel about this in a different way. All I wanted to do is make sure that a Chosen, when he gets married, should have somebody who tells them, don't rush. Take your time. Say beautiful words. Honor your, 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 your partner. Honor your wife. Find out which parts of, the, of her body does she want to have touched more than any others. Don't worry so much that you'll be poilet shich vazera because uh, if that's what you're going to worry about, you're going to attack her and you're not going to be able to to make her the kind of keli that will make a bris for life with you. That's what I'm, th that's what my concern is. That's the reason why I wanted this conversation. Yes. You know, wh when he's saying en dorshin, you know, I wish that I could have a conversation with uh, anyone who is under 40 here and have the rest of you get out of the room and do it one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not talking to you yet. Let me finish first, okay? And if I could do it one-on-one, -on -one, it would be a different story. It would go with the Indian of in Dorshin Barayot in in such a way and I could talk a little bit more clear and ask what is your real experience and what do you know. Sir, you wanted to ask something. Yes, uh, a question. What would you say to yourself as a young man, if you were as you envisioned some young man, what would you say to yourself now if you had that opportunity? Yes, I would find I would ask find you've been invited to various homes find uh, that couple where you thought you really felt love between them and ask that husband uh, tell me how does that go for you okay uh, because I'd like to see only a happy person only someone who feels in Yiddish you would say a rota guten bettleger you know there's, there's a good sexual life for him such a person would be a good one to talk to. I understand that if you were to ask the Rosh Hashiva in the middle of a shir how to do the Bia Rishayna, you would hear you would hear answers that that would shock everybody. Because you see, here's the big problem. At one point, I think I mentioned that to you before. Very few Rabbonim today have had shimush with a poisik. Most of them have come out from yeshivas and they have learned the dinim, but they haven't ever seen what a veshet looks like and what a, what, what a stomach looks like and what a trefer, what a, what a lung looks like. And they're learning all these things, but they don't know. And when it comes to Shelot Noshim, they have no idea whatsoever what's actually going on. No. On the other hand, by, by what do they go? So they look in the Sefer, and the Sefer will always give you a Dovra Shavu Lechol Nefesh, and it will give you the thing Lechumri. When, on the other hand, people used to come, remember, it says, David HaMelech, what did he do? He was Oisig B'Shap of he, uh, he was working to help uh, women, Letar Isha Lebalo because he cared for that. Now, I think if, <laughs> if young Rabboni would be able to go and learn with David HaMelech how to retire Isha Lebalo, then they wouldn't go necessarily to the, to the Shulchan Aruch about that. They would learn how to look at the Ksomim in such a way and ask the right kind of a question. What was your feeling when that happened? And so on and so forth. 
That's why there are some women in, in Israel who are now the Toanot and some of the Yoatzot. And it's really wonderful because it's much easier for a woman to talk to another woman and the woman who knows the language with which to ask the Rabbanim the question. But the Rav goes always to ask question about wh uh, where does the person come from? Is it a Shasat Chak? Is it a, a Hefset Merube? Is it Orchim? Whatever the thing is, you'll find uh, you'll find the place to be able to make a ruling. But he is not going to go like like a, a Rosh Hashiva who will always send you to the Chumrah. When you said before that Shalai Shal Shal Sani Isha, if I understood it correctly and, and possibly I did, yeah. that the bracha is, is, is again that um, I don't, I'm not going through all this, uh, the Tzar of Leda and these things, is that because it's so difficult? Was that what you were saying? I, um, want to, I wanted to create a certain level of empathy. You know, you rush through the brachas in the morning, you know, and and you never spend a moment to live, to feel how the Rebbein Shalom gives you the Koyach. You say like kind of and and you don't <sighs> take a deep breath, you know. So when it comes Shaloya Sani Isha to be able to think of what your wife is going through, you know, and how much di more difficult her life is and what she has to give up in order to be an Eishet Chayla Teres Bala. And I think just a few moments to think about that makes you go to breakfast later on and say, uh, uh, smile at her, you know, it's a big difference. That's all I mean to say. Uh, so Grant, in other words, the, the, the idea is there, the, the wording of Shaloy Asani is a little, remains a bit problematic. But the sentiment is, Look, I tell you something, I'm not going to fight with uh, the Matveya Shatov Chachomim, but there is an Italian, I have a sitter that was the, the, the rabbi of Rome, some 50 years ago, translated it, and goes like this, Benedetto es tu, Signore, uh, Dei Nostri, Re dell'Universo, che ascenda me, Seconda da tua volontà e affindandomi a me una cosa difficile e delicata, de sposa, de madre e de regina della casa. That's his translation of Shalosani Isha, which means, you, thank you, you have made me second in your creation, and you have entrusted in me that delicate and difficult task of being a wife, a mother, and the queen of the household. <laughs> now, do you see what I mean? <laughs> I think this man who translated it really had a love relationship with his wife that he <laughs> translated in such a way. So, I'm talking about the kavanah to put in, not so much the wording. Okay, anyone else? Yes, sir. Hi, uh, I am under 40. I've never, <laughs> never been married. Uh, please um, come closer. Uh, Come closer, come close to the machine so I can A, see you and I can hear you better too because you're dealing with someone who has uh, a hearing problem. Okay, speak. So you address the problem of people marrying women that they don't really know so much and don't think that it's, uh, don't think that it's so important to know them very well. But um, in my circles I see the opposite problem. People think too much about every situation and people are very picky um, and it takes them a very long time to find somebody that they can commit to um, so I'm wondering if you can address that uh, also for myself something I struggle with is um, if it's hard for me to find someone who I can commit to at what point do I do I come to the conclusion that there's some problem with me that I need to become less picky or if I just haven't met the right girl I want to tell you something this is not some, you know, from time to time, who is the person who's sitting here who's hiding? You. Good, I want to see your opponent too, come on. Thank you. Uh, from time to time, people ask me these questions in public. And then I say, this is, sorry, I can't answer that. That's a pastoral question. This is something that you do be a chidus, you know? Because I don't know from what kind of mishpacha you come from. 
I don't know what's go what your experiences are. I don't know what is the fear that makes you picky. I don't know anything about your betochen and, uh, and about how you stand in relationship to the Rebbeinu Shalom. Because a zivug is mina shamayim, and, and when they're saying that arboim yom kodim yitziras havlat, that you know that it's already decided in some way. I I can't talk uh, for for a general ru rule for people in in public this way. I d but I do invite as I did last time when I was here with you. I invited some people to call me if they wish individually. This is something I'm not going to discuss. Because in some way, I would also have to ask you to speak about intimate things. So I would know how to answer. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Dama Shetoshiv depends a great deal when they say, Sheilat Chacham Chatzitshuva. The way in which you ask the question helps me to give an answer, and I can't do this uh, at a public meeting. I know that uh, Reb Urban I tells me. Uh, go ahead, speak. No, I, I, I want to. Maybe I can. I'll use. I'm going to take that question and make it less personal. But I. Yeah, go ahead. And reflect on it. So you make a point about knowing someone. In courtship. So that the love, so that love can be more now whatever, genuine, enduring, work, whatever. But there's also something about the insecurity that you can't, that you don't know someone. Yeah. That is, and the and the insecurity of the of courtship itself that produces and creates the romance and passion. Yeah, and that actually falling in love with someone's hashkafa, and and here and you can be personal with me because you know and I'm okay about it. Yeah, falling in love with I, I I'll do it this way. I fell in love with my wife's hashkafa. I, I'm 29 years married last week, so I fell in love. We had a shared hashkafa, but actually it turned out over the years that we really had in many ways. Far different than I imagined, different hashkafas. Yeah. And the different hashkafas, as they were discovered, were not fun and central to romance. And not just central to, to love, but central to the passion of romance that I think what we discovered actually got undermined by our being secure with each other. Does that make any sense? Absolutely, because two positives on a magnet will repel each other. It's and in the, the, had the insecurity of a relationship, yeah. in my experience, is related to the passion. Yeah. And imagining that I do know someone, or imagining that I do, because till death do I part, now we don't say that, yeah. but imagine that it's unconditional yep. as anything more than an aspiration and securing the relationship somehow is not as it is not all it's cracked up to be either. There's a problem with that. And Ochanamis, so I want to tell you, uh, every time I s s people come with a exuber, you know, they nowadays they all want to write their own ketubah. And so they show me the Ksubis and there's no Kenyan in it and there's nothing, but it's all airy fairy stuff, you know. And it takes me a while to be able to tell him I'm sorry, I'm not accepting that, I'm, I'm not going to use that as a uh, bisomach on that kind of Ksubis. It has to have several things. It has to have, first of all, I want him to have a prenuptial agreement from a lawyer nowadays. Then I want him to take that Nai Kedushin on Nisuin, that under five circumstances nothing has taken place, that the, 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 the Kedushin were bottled. As a whole Indian, I can't spend time r right now on that. But it's really important to be able to understand that it's in the difference between the two minds. Look, 
the, the male, even if he were to have such a thing as a parva male and a parva female, they would be so different. Again, Jakey, our, our, our Mashpia once said, if an Ashkenazi marries a Temani, that's sort of like a big intermarriage. What a distance they have to cover. When a man marries a woman, it's a bigger distance. <laughs> because the mind of, of the, the male mind and the female mind are not really are not there. Sometimes when you get a feedback from your wife and you have a sense, this is not what you would expect and you're surprised and sometimes even, even uh, a little buzzed by that. But then you find out that's another pair of eyes, as it were, to look at reality. So that's, that's true. The other thing is that the issue of passion, uh, or, uh, I'm not even saying passion, let's say 80 er and 70 z. Remember that song? And you can imagine a couple like this. And there's and they still get cozy with each other, you know? And and, and love each other and and touch. Because the issue of touch deprived it's very, very hard. Many people in the homes for the aged, you know, and so on and so forth, get get older and you don't feel anyone giving you this kind of a glit, you know, a touch that you need from time to time. Not everything is genital sexuality. There is a kind of sexuality is is enayich yonim, you know, how you look at the other person. And that's a great turn on. Uh, and that comes with admiration and with all that kind of stuff that has to go on. I'm, I'm, you know, I can't at this point lay it all out because I'm a little shepman sagt zu retten wegen die Sachen. You know, it's not easy to talk, but it's really very important to be able to admire, uh, to ad to admire even the shape of the person, your wife, a a in a way that, that, you know. So they say uh, you shouldn't do it uh, with the lights on, and you shouldn't do it w and talk, and they have a whole bunch of you shouldn't do it. And what happens is the imagination, in the imagination the lights are on, but not necessarily, you know, uh, hi, hi, his mind is on somebody else when he's doing that, just as the Shulchan Aruch said you shouldn't, you know. I don't know what more I can say. I, can, uh, I just feel that we have to bring in the heart, we have to bring in the imagination, we have to bring in the romance and the enchantment back, because that's very much what's lacking. I can imagine that the kids see the father looking at his wife and saying, singing Eishas Chayil with a loving look that is genuine, you know, and uh, the whole Shabbos Tish is going to change flavor. And what's going to happen after the Tish <laughs> is also going to be a lot better. Thank you. You're welcome, dear. <laughs> Many brachas to you to find the right person in Yat and to ha and to have a binyan adayad and bring down wonderful deshamas into this world who should help heal our planet. Say amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> yes, please. Um, in my experience, and I louder, please. <clears throat> I think for me, in a, in a certain regard, um, you're preaching to the non-choir, because for me, there's more experience. I mean, I'm under 40, but there's more experience, so there's something. But in, even in that experience, my understanding is, is that in the last few generations, it's not so much the untrained physicality as that the hearts are really closed. The hearts are more closed to things than they used to be. You know, we go out into we go out into, into the, our work lives and into our whatever we do from day to day over here, and we have to maintain a callous heart. And I think that somewhere in there is is a bit of a, a solution to perhaps what you're talking about, because it's very hard to not make a really um, impassioned, empathic, 
open and caring connection unless the heart's closed. And I think so when you're when, when one is able to be more concerned with the rules than with the than with the powder keg, then then that to me symbolizes that there's a part of the anatomy that's not working. And then the part of the anatomy is the heart. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. I want to say that the issue is, allow me to say it uh, sort of in a more drushy way, okay? Umaltem es orlas levavchem veorpachem lo sakshu od. So the question is, becholavavchem means beshnei yitzarecha. And if so, why does the yitzatov need to have a mila? Get that? Everybody would agree the Yetzirah needs to have uh, umaltem. But why does the Yetzirah Tov need umaltem? Because when you go out on the street in New York and you do your work, you, you have to become a Kshay Oirev in a way, and that's not good when you come home. So then the question is going to be, can you open yourself even for 10 minutes to sit down? You know, why do we say, Ona Bechoyach Befala Chodoidi? We are trying to say, Rabbi Nishlam, a whole week with all the daigas and everything that I had, I'm leaving it in your hands. No, Gibar Doshe, You know, take care of that for me. But then I can say, I'm trying to say that if you can do that and say, Hashem as Lavavcho, to say, Rabbi Nishlam, I'm going to be with my mishpoche, and I want to, to be a father who feels f- with the kinderlach, and a husband who feels with his wife, and I come from, and I need to have a tvila. You know, sometimes we can go to mikveh good, if you can take a shower good, sometimes even the tilas you die him this way, and say, Rebbein Shalom, the koichi ve'otzim yodi that I needed for a whole week, I want to wash it off, I want to cut off, netilat yodayim, like netilat sepurnaim, I want to get rid of that so that I can have an open heart for my family. Nobody can do this avoider for us unless we do it ourselves, you know. And But what's necessary is that in our culture, it should be like this. Could you imagine, for instance, if I, w- if I were to have a, a minion? We were talking the other time, I'm missing one of the young people who was talking about making another minion in Brooklyn. But could you imagine, huh? Oh, there he is. It was Yitzchak. Yes. Were you talking, Yitzchak, about the, the other minion in Brooklyn? Yes. Yeah. We're, we're, we're still trying to, we have now a possibility of a shul. Uh-huh. Let us use his So could, could, could you imagine if, for instance, uh, after Kiddush on Friday night, and people are g- saying good Shabbos, if one would give a clap of the tish and would say, don't forget to be nice to your <laughs> mishpochet. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you can't do this in the average shul, you know? But <laughs> don't forget to be romantic, you know? Uh, you said shirashirim before you daven mincha. Now would you say shirashirim again <laughs> before you go to bed? <laughs> I, you know what I'm trying to say? I'm, I'm, uh, how, c- how can we make this changed, that culture that needs changing so it shouldn't be a um, uh, uh, done when they say Kilo Koffer Shed, you know, I don't want to do it, I want to be finishing like Revan Kalina in one place says, uh, uh, I don't like anybody who's Marich in that. In, in opposition to that, the Balatolda says, uh, that Shamati uh, Mimori, I heard from the Baal Shem Tov, the Tam, uh, why Arichus Agolis takes so long, uh, why Mashiach is late in coming, he says, Niglu Limina Shamaim, Mishum Sheim Marichim Besod Neshikin, Beava Rabba. It's an amazing statement. That's way different than, than Rabbi and Kalina, you know? When the Baal Shem Tov was saying that if his wife were still alive, he could go to Sarah Shemaim, uh, then he was talking about a kind of Yehud that that takes him to 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 higher Olimus. Very few people have. Let me say something that 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 will sound really strange to you, but what would be 
if you know of somebody who needs a refuel, and you say to your wife, when we, we will dedicate our kavana and our lovemaking for the refuel of that person, so that that mitzvah that we are doing, the merit of that mitzvah should go for the refuel for that person. Can you imagine what kind of a yichud that would be of heart to heart, mind to mind, if something like this were to take place? <sighs> yes, sir. Uh, you spoke about putting uh, love letters under the plates of uh, people. Yeah. Uh, that really touched my heart. I like that. Uh, can you talk about more examples of that in your life that you've done over the ages, over your time as a uh, as a growing young man as well? <laughs> the growing young man is Paul Hashem, Hashem Ayid, like you. Uh, yeah. But Paul, I want to say this. One of the things that you can do and learn to do is to give and receive a massage. To be able to put your hands on that goof of the person whom you love and do whatever, you know, I'm not talking about a, a, a therapeutic massage that you're trying to fix the muscles or the stuff like this, <laughs> but just a loving touch uh, massage to give to each other and to exchange that. What a thing that would be. You know, Leil Tvile could be such a wonderful thing if it were done the right way. Uh, and uh, I would want to say for very young couples at this point, it would be Kedai sometimes to be able to make a deal with some friends and say, listen, uh, would you take care of our baby, baby this night, you know, and I'll do it for you. We'll, ta we'll babysit your babies so that we can have really some encounter in a way that we don't have to have our ear going to the baby's room and are we waking anyone up and so on. It's not easy. It's really not easy and it and people don't pay much attention to it. And so if you if you think about it beforehand and you plan, you talk it over. It's not only you gonna bring uh, I'm gonna bring to my wife what are my my goodies. Talk it over with her. How would you how would you like to see this happen between us? And so on. And you see that uh, the meeting of minds and hearts is very important. I'm running out of steam, Rabotai. Let me take one or more, uh, one or two more, and, and uh, we'll talk. Uh, I, I think maybe some people were touching on it before, but it seems to be a, a <coughs> incongruity or just a. Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, in, in Yeshiva, uh, which a lot of us attend to and we're brought up in that mindset, basically you're told since since um, one imagines, one becomes aware of the opposite sex, one is told, no, touch that. Definitely don't speak to one, and for sure don't think about it. Rabbi Yitzchak, I, I'm sorry, I'm missing out what you're saying. Okay. Start again, <laughs> and, and make revach tasimi ben eda la eda. Speak a little slower. Go ahead. Um, Yeshiva, one, yeah. is, one is told at, at a certain age, one should not touch a woman, obviously. Yeah. One should not think about women, preferably, and, and, and um, you know, don't think, don't talk to, etc., etc. Then it just seems to be a big problem, because you're supposed to get married to one of these things that one is not supposed to think to or talk about, etc. So there's, it's, it's a somewhat of a, a big plan. You're supposed to be not think about this, keep it away, totally, and then you're supposed to be extremely intimate and, and create a, a, um, a, 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 a bias nem and bias row with one of these things that until three seconds ago was almost considered, was considered off limits, but was almost considered, you know, horrible, in a certain way. Of course not horrible, but, but, right. And I think possibly, and, and, and what I would like to just bring it into is that some people, I think, even when them, they might be married 20 years, but they're, there's, there's a vestige of that thought that still um, goes along, even maybe 20 years later in marriage. Um, how does one maybe break through or rekindle or, or um, ignite something maybe that was never there in a certain way? To somebody that has been married 20 years. Yeah, I would want to say this is where you need, it says, 
Aselech Arav, Knelech Ochaver, you know? If uh, a young man who's about to be married, and as I was saying, he saw that in this person, in this household, there's beautiful, loving Shalom Bayis, to be able to inv to say, uh, even for, the, for you, if you see it, to say, you're about to be married, what do you really know? And if you'd like to have a, a, this kind of a conversation, I'll have it with you. Obviously, we have to do that do it in, in very private ways and it's, I'm doing this really with a sense that in other words this call is being monitored by for quality purposes in other words so you shouldn't descend into pornographic stuff because you know it's so easy to start talking in, in such a way but to be able to know right now um, I I really have a sense that with you I'm talking in the Rabbin Shalom Vayakshef Hashem, you know. I, that's the reason why I'm careful about what I'm saying because it, it really is, has to be that way. But it should be, this is private conversation. The word will get around because one chosen will say to the other chosen, you're about to be married, go and talk to Rabbi Yitzchak, you know. Go and talk to Rabbi so-and-so uh, because he'll he'll open up a safer with you and and show you something in the Zohar and then he'll explain and Beno le Beno this is how it works out that's why I wrote the, that little that little mimer and that contrast so you can also say come Lama Zechab you know and read through that and see what you get out of it that's the, that's the best I can do one more and then I want to give you a broche Just take the bracha. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a comment. <coughs> if nobody had. I, I'm old enough to have been married a couple of times. I have kids, uh, and I've actually talked to my my daughter's husband, and nobody has ever talked to me like you were in talking. I don't know if anybody else has ever talked to you to any of the people here, but this is nothing that happens amongst men to. Uh, massage them along in the growing of, of maturing. And I think I, I encourage you to keep doing this in your own way and in a way you feel comfortable with. I think we need to hear that, that it's not just an object, uh, but that there's a, a human interaction and there's a lot of confusion and misunderstandings and that we're trying to find our way through this. I've never been so alone as when I've been married. And, and, and that to you because sometimes we have this projection, but it's not really what happens in the real. Well, I again, this is some of the things could could be done done in private, but I want to say that the issue of intimacy it doesn't happen without the yud hey. You know, when you're talking about ish is alef yud shin, isha is alef shin hey. And between them, it's ish ish with two yud and a hey. The, what I'm not trying to say this as as a as, as a drash. I'm trying to say it for real. That a recognition. Look, all of us. This goes with the bracha. The Rebbe should all help him. May God help us all. That we should be able to be shushvine the matronusa to help the shchina to be redeemed. Because as the shchina is in Knesset Israel, among the women uh, in. Uh, in, in our world, it needs a redemption. It needs to be redeemed. And let us all be of those people who can help the Shechina to be redeemed. I can promise you also that when the Shechina feels more redeemed, you will have more naches in your life and in your spiritual and in your sexual life too. And uh, in two weeks we're going to talk again. Uh, and that time women can also be here and we'll be talking about Yomim uh, Noroim and the work of Yom Noroim. But if I don't see you, then you should have a good yaw, a gebenched yaw. The Rebbe should all help and we should have the koiches that we need to have to go through the difficult times that this coming year is bound to bring to us. Because there's a lot of, lot of toitsois of the wrong choices that we have made, that the government has made, the way in which we use the world. All this is coming home to roost. And without having a uh, real help from the Rebbeinu to see this through is going to be not so easy. So I give you a broche 
the Rebbe says, I'll help me. You should be really very close and you should feel Hashkoche Protius in your life in a good way. Say Amen. Amen. Okay, welcome to you. And I know that you're going to schmooze for a while, so cold tooth to you and and hot Call the Rebbe in private? Yes. Yeah? Yes, yes. Private, somebody wants to. I can give you. I can. Reb Zalman, I can give you. I can give somebody your email, right? Who wants to call you? Yes, private. yes, and then we'll make an appointment. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Right now, I can't talk anymore. I'm really very, very no, tired. It'll, it'll be some of. Okay. Okay. Call to, call to, Brochus.